Praise God Almighty for allowing us again to be in this house one more time. Amen. Y'all need to see it. Up north. 100,000. Amen. 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 Now again, church, uh, important Bible class tonight. And again, I want to take my text from uh, Jude verse 3. And as you recall, probably Jeremiah uh, gave an instruction, and he said, God had not sent the false prophets. He went on to say, but they ran. In other words, they went on preaching. But God didn't send them. But he also stated, had they stood in my counsel, the counsel of the prophet or the counsel of God, they would have caused the people of God to turn from their wicked ways. So again, we are trying to let the world know that we're not their enemy. We're trying to cause them or create within them a spirit of righteousness that they can come out of darkness, ignorance, Amen. into the marvelous light of God. Yeah. If we do that and save one soul, our labor is not in vain. So again, brothers and sisters, someone has to hold up this standard. Yes. Someone's got to be counted worthy. Amen. Amen. To bear witness of this great truth. Yes. Now, if you take notice again, I do jump right into verse 3. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Now let's be Galatians chapter 1, jump right into verse 6. That we earnestly contend for the faith once delivered. The faith once delivered is the original teaching of the prophets and the apostles. Not something extra or something different. And notice how Paul kind of brings this into action. Uh, verse 6. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him and call you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. Now, Jude is giving a warning to the church for a reason. He said, matter of fact, he said, it's needful for me to write unto you that you earnestly contend for the faith. So somewhere along the line, he, it, there was a weakness for him to write this epistle. Now, Paul writes a similar epistle, if you take notice again, in, in verse 6. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ. Somebody left the faith. And Paul wrote that epistle. Now he was saying, there's not another gospel, read. Which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. This is the problem that we have today. Amen. Too many diverse doctrines coming in the name of Jesus, but not with the truth of Jesus. We have the truth. And we're going to bear witness of that truth no matter what happens. So again, we cannot get discouraged on this journey. We cannot give up on this journey. We've got to keep pressing on. And again, sometimes it looks like our labor is in vain. But this is the reason why I said the Word of God is so important and why we often reflect on it and why we have to believe the Bible. Amen. Amen. God said your labor is not in vain. Now, in other words, the struggle that we go through, sooner or later, is going to be a reward. Uh, connect me with Revelation uh, 22, jump right into verse 12. Jumping around a little bit here in the Bible. But I want you to understand where I'm building up to. The church of God must go forward and put aside everything, every weight, everything that would cause you to have a spirit of doubt. Anything that would cause you... In, and let me re re reiterate what I said the other night. Anytime you come to church unhappy, you got a spirit of doubt somewhere. Anytime you come overburdened, now true, we have a burden when we carry the cross of Christ. But it's it's all about that. Carry your burden, carry your but when it gets too heavy, God said, Cast your cares upon me. Give it over to the Lord in prayer. Tell the Lord, i got a situation here, and I'm going to put it in your hands because I can't handle it. And I'm going to stop worrying about it. When you put it in the hands of God, He'll take over from there. But what you've got to do is stand aside. Don't say, but I'm going to give it to you, Lord. And then you, you keep meditating on it, worrying about it, still trying to figure it out. Don't do that. Leave it in the hands of God. And you'll feel something lift up on you. That, and that is that 
worrisome burden of unhappiness. Sum it up one word, unhappiness. So I'm saying, if we learn how to have faith in God and believe His Word, then when these epistles come, it comes to shake us up. Let us know. Maybe I'm slipping here. Maybe I'm sliding over this way. i got to get a hold of myself. Jude said, it was needful for me to write to you that you earnestly and contempt for the faith once delivered. Amen. Brothers and sisters, there's one Bible and there's one teaching ideology that comes forth from that Bible and that's included in the doctrine. Now Paul said, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him with cause the grace of Christ. Now he's talking about the dispensation of grace. He's talking about a church that obviously has went astray. Now they're still in the church, but they're teaching a doctrine that Paul and the apostles never taught. They're in the church, but they're teaching this all right, baptized Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Right. They teach a doctrine that says all right to smoke cigarettes and drink liquor. Teaching a doctrine that's contrary to what the apostles taught. So Paul gives a warning. Read that again, verse 6. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ and to another gospel, which is not another, but there be some... Now what does he mean, there's not another? There's not another interpretation of the gospel. Only one interpretation, and that comes from the prophet and the apostle. Read. But so... Which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. Now, I connect this right with you, verse 5. I will therefore put you in remembrance, so you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt. And, uh, am I in you, verse 5? Amen. Uh, back up to verse 4. For there are certain men crept in unaware. Certain men crept in unaware. Now, this is the same thing Paul said in around verse 7 or 8. Someone is going to pervert the gospel of Christ. Jude says what? There are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace How many of times God. have I shared with you the word ordained meaning they were preachers? Amen. Baptized in Jesus' name. But not teaching what the apostles taught them. They are creating a division in the church. All these denominations have created a division in the church. Amen. And how many times have we shared 1 Corinthians 1 and 10? All speak the same thing. No division, no disputing, no uh, uh, argument about one text against another text, one verse against another verse, Not, none of that. And again, the reason why God sends one teacher over the congregation, and I'm talking about the overall congregation, I ain't talking about this group here. One teacher, Amen. Because that creates a oneness in the faith and it creates a direction where there's no room for argument or debate or strife. Amen. When you've got different divisions, someone's going to come up with a different interpretation. I, I shared with a sister some years ago, and that will be it. And uh, give me a, 1 Timothy 3 and 16. We were dealing with the God here. And I said, uh, I'm Jesus only. She said, oh, I used to be that, but I found out uh, that's, that's not the right way. I said, oh. I said, well, what about 1 Timothy 3 and 16? Read that. And I'm going to show you how the devil can take a verse and cleverly slant it to mean other than what the scripture is trying to say. And y'all know that what the scripture is trying to say. Read. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. Now, when I hit that passage of scripture with her, God was manifest in the flesh, she said, yeah, but it don't mean what you think. I said, well, what do I think? <laughs> now, see what she's trying to do? She's trying to create a diversion from the actual truth because she knows what I'm thinking. Amen. I'm thinking the same thing she ought to be thinking. Amen. And what she thought before the devil twisted her mind. Read that again. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. Now Paul goes on to say what? Justified in the spirit, uh -huh. seen of angels, preached unto the that Gentiles. That seen of angels, that means he was in heaven at one time. Amen. Uh -huh. Preached unto Gentiles. Preached to the world. Believed on in the world. Uh -huh. Received up into glory. And went back up to glory. Now it says God was manifest or made 
or became flesh. Amen. He became a human being to suffer and die on the cross. Now God didn't die on the cross. The flesh. But the spirit of God was in the flesh. But when the flesh died, the spirit, as you know, left and went back to his divinity. Amen. Is that right? That's right. And Jesus said it's settled. It's done. In other words, the price for humanity through the redemption process has been completed. Amen. But again, it took a man. But it's so complex to try to figure out, well, how can he be the son and yet the father? How can he be God? Yet he died on the cross. But God never died. God can't die. If God died, then we ain't. Our, our, our race is in vain. Matter of fact, we wouldn't even be here today. Why? Because we're reflecting holiness. And the devil would get rid of the holiness folk, folk first. Amen. Before he, and then, then he'll take care of the rest of them. But he wants to get rid of the true church first. But brothers, we've got to understand this is a warfare, this is a struggle. And I'm trying to explain. In the warfare or the struggle, there's a burden. It has to be shouldered by each individual. But if the burden gets too heavy, you got to turn it over to God. Now, the reason why the burden gets so heavy because we make it heavy. By trying to understand and figure out the anxieties of the world and try to relate it with us in the false churches and again trying to relate it with us. So it, it creates a... a, a Man, a mountain of worry, Amen. trying to understand, trying to figure out why they don't understand like we understand. Uh, if we can see it, why can't they see it? I, I, you know, I, I said my car used to think about that. Why they can't see what we see in holiness? The Bible says without holiness, no man should see the Lord. Well, it's, what's so complex about it? Paul said, but present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. I shared a passage of scripture with someone and they uh, claimed they believed in the, Jesus, uh, the uh, Seventh day Adventist church. But you said, but we still got to keep the Sabbath holy. And so in Colossians, uh, get me Colossians again, 3 and is that 3 and 16 in Colossians. New moon and holy days. And Two and sixteen. Yes. Let no man therefore judge you in me or in drink or in respect of a holy day. Now, no man judge you. In other words, no preacher can tell you you wrong because you don't keep the Sabbath holy. Amen. Read that again. Let no man therefore judge you in me or in drink or in respect of a holy day or of the new moon, or of the Sabbath day, uh -huh. which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. Yes. Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, intruding into those things which he have not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. Now, if you connect this with Romans 12 and verse 1, 2, it tells you very clearly that each day, that you live in a sanctified way is a holy way. Not just a particular day. He don't want no more Sabbath. And uh, I want, give me a uh, Hebrews chapter 10. What do you say about candle burning? Amen. If you're going to keep the Sabbath, you got to keep killing that oxen every holy day. <laughs> you got to get you some candles. I, man, I saw the TV last night. Here's a woman and she's trying to get her soul right with God. And she went to this Catholic church and they got candles over there. And she, yep. she got her candle and they got thing and yep. uh, another candle is lit. Mm -hmm. And then they got stems. When you yep. dip it in the lit candle and then light your candle, then you walk up to the yep. damn altar uh -huh. and then you sit it down, then you yep. pray. That's right, Read. Bro. <laughs> and burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin. Thou burnt offering can. means a candle. Offering. That's exactly what she's doing. She lit it up, then she goes and makes it a offering. Burn offering what? And sacrifices for sin. Burn offerings because you have sinned. Thou but, hast had no pleasure. Because he don't have no pleasure. Forget about it. Why is it they still do these things when the Bible speaks against it? Because they misunderstand. They misinterpret. Somebody telling them, yeah, but it don't mean that. Somebody telling you God manifests in the flesh. It don't mean that. 
somebody tell you, well, uh, uh, the correct baptism is in Jesus' name. Yeah, but Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is what God said. But here's what I'm trying to explain. Amen. If you don't have a teacher who can break it down and teach you what thus saith the Lord in a correct way so you can understand, you're going to have all kind of confusion and all kind of uh, burdens that you begin to carry to you because you think about what somebody else said or what somebody else interpreted the Bible, the way they interpret it, and you keep this burden sometimes in your subconscious. But I'm trying to let you know, you get rid of your past life and get yourself wrapped up and tied up in Jesus and follow the word of God all you know how, live all you know how. At the end of your journey, everything's going to be all right because everything's going to come out perfect and correct in Jesus. So it's a struggle day by day. But let's learn how to be strong in the faith. We are the guiding light. Yes. How are you going to let somebody persuade you that you're in the wrong church and join that church rather than you persuade them they're in the wrong church, come on over and join this church. Amen. Yeah, but I got 12 other members. Yeah, we got a handful. What's the difference? The difference is you were still not a Paul church with, but with your 1,000, 1,200, whatever you got. And we in the right church with our handful. Right. Yeah. Certainly, it's a case you know, the way that you select and few that can find it. Amen. Few people want to be uh, taught correctly if they can understand what they said to the Lord. Why? Because there's something in their life they do not want to give up. Amen. I had a woman tell me she's not going to give up her earrings. Well, the Bible condemns earrings. Amen. Yeah, but I'm not going to give it up. Another woman told about the Christmas tree. I have a tree every year. What does that mean? Amen. God can give me the Christmas tree. Yeah, but I still have a tree every year. You're missing the point. I don't care if you got 99 trees every year. God condemned the tree. Case closed. Now what you going to do about it? You going to obey the word of God or you going to disobey the word of God? So again, it brings us all back to the same case scenario. You've got to follow the code of obedience in order to live a holy and sanctified life. So we today have uh, made up our mind and have reserved within ourselves the ability to hold on to truth regardless of what other people do. And what I'm trying to do tonight is try to reinforce your belief in the Bible and, and get you into a, a, a state of mind. If I get confused, I'm going to go right to the Word. Amen. And the Word sometimes is clear as glass of ice water. And since you have sat underneath my teaching, it's clearer than a glass of ice water. So therefore, you've got the word of God, and you've got the proper interpretation. Where is your error? Where is your fault? Where is your lack of faith? Lord, I don't have none. Well, thank God. Let's be happy and go on our journey. We're happy and we're in peace of mind. That's why uh, Peter wrote in the second, give me a chapter two of the book of Acts. Right from verse 40. Here Peter is giving an encouraging message to the New Testament church that has just been created. Now you know when Peter preached his sermon, this was the beginning of the New Testament church. Amen. That sermon introduced the first New Testament church. Read. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Save yourself. Make it personal. Uh huh. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto now, them. Do you understand? They that gladly received his word. So everybody there, did they gladly receive his word? No. But when God was establishing the New Testament church, he had many to hold on to the word because you're building it now. In the latter day, there's a decline. Amen. So some people get, well, if Lord is with you, how come he ain't blessing? He is blessing. Amen. Well, 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 where's everybody? What do you mean, where's everybody? <laughs> do you know the difference between the latter day and the beginning? In the beginning, he's building up something. The latter days are falling away. Oh, yeah. he, and I shared the other night, God said, except I shorten the time, there would be no flesh worth saving. But for the election, the same people, I'm going to shorten the time. Why? Because they'll fall away. They'll be discovered. Hallelujah. That's why we're so small in number. Too many people got discouraged. And before all of us fall away, and this is the true church, y'all listen to me and hear me what I'm saying. God will come and split that sky and 
wipe away the underworld generation, the sinful and disobedient and the unbelieving. He's going to wipe it away yeah. before he'll let it come down to nobody standing in true light. So don't ever think, well, this is going to be, and that's going to cause the next one to leave, and then the next one, it may be. But somebody going to stay. And, and, and it's going to be at, at, at least two or three. Because the Bible says, by I was mouth of two or three witnesses. And then he said, I'll be with you. Amen. So all we got to do is fight the good fight of faith. And along the way, receive our blessings. But the certain blessings, it takes prayer to push through. And here's the reason being. If you need a great big blessing, you need some great big prayer. Right. In other words, you just can't get down in a 10 second prayer and say, well, why? Because that does not show an effort. It does not show a perseverance. It does not show a dedication. And God is looking for perseverance, dedication, and a pressing in you for the pressing way. Amen. So when I pray for something, I pray fervently. I believe one past scripture says uh, 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 the problem when you pray for somebody, you pray fervently. Well, with the effort. Put forth everything into it. Well, Lord, hey amen. You know I need this. And, okay, thank you, Lord. No. You got to pray sometimes for what you need. Pray. And get up in the morning and pray that same prayer again. Go down that night. Same prayer again. What? Week after week. Month after month, and sometimes year after year, until now God hears the prayer. But again, the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man bears of much. So when a person has set their heart, mind, and soul to pray to God for a breakthrough, a miracle, what they need, if you keep praying, God will open up that door and he'll let that miracle go through. Amen. But he has to see a dedication. Because there's so much weakness. And God does not want a weak church. Amen. He does not want you to be weak. Amen. So if you pray for something, keep on praying for it. And here's what I'm telling you. Yeah. If you keep praying for it, and you keep on living, God will bring it to pass. Amen. Now watch and see what I tell you. Hallelujah, I know what I'm saying is true. I was thinking about uh, a, a, a billionaire helping us. Amen. Lord. I'm praying for being there. I don't care whether it's this being there, that being there, or what being there. As long as the being there, we got the money to do what I need to be done. Yeah, Lord. Thank God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. He's a prayer answering God. Yeah. Don't ever forget it. Yeah. And I'm a little witness. Lord, we have to understand, and I'm trying to teach you faith. Yes. Put into action by your resolve in serving God and believing that God's going to come through for you. Amen. Church, you'll never fail you. And some, I want some to know, don't doubt for one moment that God is not in charge. Amen. He's in charge of every situation and you don't try to... Now, Lord, now you, I don't think you should have done that way. I, I, I think... Don't ever do that. Amen. You're questioning God. All you have to do is be his servant. What is a servant? Servant say from the root word to serve. Amen. Amen. Is that right? Amen. <laughs> so if I'm a good steward, I'm going to serve God all I know how. And if somewhere on the line I have a weakness of faith, I have to pray that weakness out of me. That's why the Bible says that the weak sounds strong. If you keep saying you're strong, then you won't be weak because your faith will take over and the next thing you know, you are strong. Amen. Praise oh, hallelujah. Mm. Moses couldn't speak too good. No. God said, don't worry about it. I chose you to be the leader. Amen. <laughs> he didn't choose uh, uh, Aaron, who obviously could speak real good. He chose Mo uh, Moses to be the leader. Because when Aaron and his sister rebelled, he called Aaron and Miriam out and said, he spoke against the leader. Amen. But Aaron is supposed to be the best speaker. All right. <laughs> it ain't the best singer, right. the best speaker. Amen. Amen. It's about the one God chose. Right. And if he chose you for true life, praise God for it. 
You can say, I don't know why he chose me. I don't know why he chose you or chose me, but he chose us. Amen. That's good enough for you and good enough for me. Amen. So that's not falter. Let's not entertain unbelief and the slightest. Amen. Hear me, somebody. And the slightest. And let's not look at too much natural conditions and natural circumstances or we'll ever. Amen. Because of what we preach the other night, a natural man can't receive this. Amen. And he can't even understand it. Yes. Let alone know it. He can't even understand it. Amen. So what we have to do is understand the power of the Spirit within us and the power of the unity we have together as a church family. We are one family. Right. We love each other. Yes. And we're going to pray for each other. We're going to be there for each other. And we're not going to talk about each other. Yeah, right. And we sure ain't going to talk about our unity. Yeah. And we're not going to talk about our truth. Yeah. We can talk about the God, why are you going to talk about the me? Right. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yeah. It's not an easy journey, but it's a glorious journey. Mm -hmm. And nothing that's worth having is not worth fighting for. It's a struggle. It's a battle. God said so. But he said it's not your battle. It's Amen. mine. It's God's battle. Oh. Lord, why am I on the front line? He put you on the front line. Amen. <laughs> that's, where, that's where the first bullets go. On the front line. Y'all know that? Not in the back. Amen. They call it the rear echelon. That's where the medics and the cooks and yep. supplies are. But the front line is where the combat soldier is. And they've got to be some combat soldiers to fight a combat. Amen. So we are combat soldiers. And uh, and uh, military now, I, I don't know what they see or have that medal. Combat soldiers, they gave you a badge, long, a blue-black background with a, a, a silver inlaid rifle. Amen. That means you was a combat soldier. Now, couldn't nobody wear that badge but a combat soldier. Amen. Air Force couldn't wear it, Navy couldn't wear it. Marines couldn't wear it. Only a combat soldier could wear that. that badge. And they were proud to wear it. So I'm saying, brothers and sisters, now we have a badge, which is a code of honor, a quality of character. Let's let our character reflect boldly and glorious and happy. Amen. We are somebody. Not just anybody. We are somebody. Rest assured of that. So again, be encouraged. And don't get discouraged on this journey. Amen. Because with some more small small battles we got to fight. Some more hills we got to overtake. Amen. We got to climb. But if I get tired, I can reach back and say, Jesus, help me. Thank you, Lord. And help is already on the way. Daddy was weak. So weak and passionate. I gotta I, I gotta get a breakthrough. Gotta get a breakthrough. And God sent an angel, and the angels, I like that, that story, he said, angel, uh, angel said to Daniel, Daniel, I was sent just for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord. Do you know, if you get in trouble, God is going to send, send an angel just for you. All right. Not the one next to you, in front of you, amen, not, not me, but for you. You got to know this. You got to believe it. Then plant your feet and true life. And tell the devil, I'm here to stay. Glory. Amen. And I'm not going nowhere. And mean it from your heart. Amen. 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 You've got to go. All right, Father. Oh, I love them so much. I don't care how much you love them. You cannot love them more than God. Amen. That's why I can't cry myself to sleep every night. In the natural, you're going to cry, though. It's going to hurt. But I got to pick up my cross. Man. Jesus, you have it. And if it costs you a little heavy, Jesus, can you give me a little, little help? Yeah, give me some help. Right. Hallelujah. Yeah. And he proved it by example. When he's going up, God got the hill. They had beat him so much, he was weak yep. in the natural. Somebody came along and picked up the cross yep. and helped him carry the cross up and go, got the hill. Is that right? Amen. That's right. Amen. They called his name. I forget his name right now. But he kept it. 
prepared to cross the field. That's to try to show you in your natural, if you get weak, somebody's going to help you carry that cross Amen. right up the hill. Amen. How many believe that tonight? Amen. How many love your church? Amen. Love your Jesus. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Love one another and love your leader. Amen. Amen. Yes. Well, we're going to, uh, let's call for, uh, evangelists. Wait a minute, just have some, just fine words. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. 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 Yes.